This is the third section of chapter seven on the simplex algorithm. And here we're going to be looking at problems requiring integer solutions. So when we require integer solutions, the first thing we need to do is to consider the integer values around or near to the optimal solution. The second thing is you need to ensure that the integers satisfy the constraints given in the question and it may be useful to record your results in a table so that you don't miss anything out. Example 12, solve the linear programming problem from example 8, which is here, given that integer solutions are required. OK, so this is all the working from example 8. And if you can't see it, what we got were these solutions. We got y equals to 80 over 11, which is equal to 7 and 3 elevenths. And then for our value of x, that was 42 over 11, which is the same as 3 and 9 elevenths. So you might want to do like a little diagram here to help us work out what the coordinates are around our point so we've got this solution which is three and nine elevenths so just write it down here three and nine elevenths and seven three elevenths so let's think about what the coordinates would be around that well our x coordinate is three uh, and nine elevenths so we want to go between three and four so three and four for our x coordinates, three, four. And for the y coordinate or the y value, we want to go between seven and eight. So seven down here and eight up here. Now we don't just put all of these four values into the um, objective function because some of these may not be in the feasible region. So we need to test each one. So we'll start with three, eight. And we're going to put the 3 and the 8 into the constraints and see if they satisfy the constraints or not. So the first constraint for 3, 8 will be 5 times 3 plus 7 times 8. And then the second constraint will be 10 times 3 plus 3 times 8. So the first value we get here is 71. For the second we get 54. Now, have a look at the constraints. The first one says that 5x plus 3y needs to be less than or equal to 70. We've got 71. So this constraint is not satisfied. Although the second one is, both need to be satisfied for us to be able to use this. So uh, we'll just cross this. That's no good. Right, let's move on to our next coordinate. Just moving across here. Now we're going to try the 4, 8 and put those values in. So we will have 5 times 4 plus seven times eight. We'll work that out in a moment. And then we'll have 10 times four plus three times eight. So 76 and 64. So neither constraint is satisfied. So again, we won't use that coordinate there. We'll move on to the next one, which is three, seven. So five times by three plus seven times by seven and then 10 times by three plus three times by seven. So we get 64 and 51. Both constraints are satisfied. So this is a pair of values we're going to try. So the last one we're going to look at is the coordinate for seven. So five times by four plus seven times by seven, then 10 times by four plus three times by seven. So 69 and 61. So this top constraint is satisfied, but the bottom one isn't because this is more than 60. So we'll cross that, which means won't have that. So the only one actually to try is the three seven. So our maximum integer.
profit um, is going to be when x is 3 and y is 7 and that will be p equals 3 times 3 plus 2 times 7 which is going to be 9 plus 14 so that gives us uh, a value of 23. Example 13, solve the linear programming problem from example 10, given that integer solutions are required. So the first thing to note is that the working from example 10 is here. The solutions we got from example 10 were x equals zero, y equals two and a half, five over two, and z equals one and seven eighths, or 15 over 8. The x value is already an integer, so the only ones we're going to change to integers are going to be y and z. Now for y, the integer values are either going to be 2 or 3, between 2 and 3. For z, the integer values are going to be, to be between 1 and 2. So now we're going to write down all of the different um, pairs of values or not pairs of values, but three values that it could be. And we'll go through them methodically. So zero is going to be for what we get for X. We'll start with uh, Y being two and Z being one. X is zero again, sticking with Y is two, but now we will go to Z is two still zero then we will move to y is three so we'll have three one and then lastly zero three two so these are the four that we're going to consider now just like the last example we're going to put these values into the constraints to see if the values are uh, satisfy the constraints so we'll start with 0 to 1. So starting with the first constraint here, we'll have 2 times by 0 plus 2 times 2. That is equal to 4. That satisfies the first constraint because it needs to be less than or equal to 5. Second constraint is going to be 5 times by x0 plus 3 times by y2 plus 4 times by 1z that gives us 6 plus 4 which is 10 uh, less than or equal to 15 so it satisfies that constraint so we can use that set of values there okay next one is 0 2 2 and then we'll put these values in so 2 times by 0 plus 2 times 2 okay well that constraint is satisfied then the second one will be five times by zero plus three times two plus four times two. That is six plus eight, which is 14. That's less than 15. So that constraint is satisfied, right? So we know we've got at least two that we're going to try. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So that will be zero, three, one. So 2 times by 0 plus 2 times 3, that equals 6. So this constraint is not satisfied. And there's no point testing the next one, because if it fails um, one constraint, then it, you know, it doesn't matter if it, if it works with the next, con next constraint, it fails. OK, so as soon as we found that it's failed, we'll move on. Right, and then the last coordinate is 0, 3, 2 on the next set of solutions, 0, 3, 2. So we'll have 2 times 0 plus, well, this is going to be the same again, isn't it? It's going to be 6. So this fails. So we could probably see that from the previous one. So we could have probably just put a cross next to it, say so it fails straight away. Right, so let's work out the values of P with our different set of solutions here, integer solutions. So when 
our solution is x equals 0, y equals 2, z equals 1, then p is going to equal 10 times by 0 plus 12 times by 2 plus 8 times 1. That gives us a value of 32. When we pick these values here, so x is 0, y is 2, z is 2. Now we know this is going to be higher because there are no negatives here, so increasing z is going to increase p, but we'll do the working anyway. So p equals 10 times 0 plus 12 times by 2 plus 8 times by 2. So that gives us p equal 24 plus 16, which is 40. So 40 is going to be the largest integer solution. So I'll just write that down. Largest integer solution is that p equals 40. So you should now be able to do exercise 7c on pages 197 to 198.